you might not have experienced the exact disappointment of opening a Quality Streets chocolates tin. It may have been a biscuit tin, but how many of us have opened a very exciting tin only to find craft supplies? <sighs> Grandma! Of course, I've eaten the chocolates because that was my gift to you. So I could use the beautiful coloured wrappers from these chocolates and make it into a sun catcher. And it is a really beautiful project. So stick around and we can experience some more disappointment now that the chocolates have gone for new generations. Let's get into it. I am going to make my sun catcher frame out of some oak veneer plywood using my new laser cutter. You know when you get a new tool and you just have to use it for as many things as possible to try it out. I do have a trip to a craft shop later on in the video though and I will show you the types of things you could buy instead of using a laser cutter to create something for yourself. Within the XCS software that comes with my Xtool laser cutter, they have some ready-made shapes and I found this really simple flower shape which was actually perfect for my sun catcher design. Initially, I thought it was going to literally be this simple. I did make it a tiny bit more complicated later, but this is actually very beginner friendly and straightforward. The only adaptation I made to this flower shape was add a circle to the top so that it would have somewhere to hang. To do this, simply add a circle shape, use the Unite tool, and then it combines the flower and the circle shape into one. Fortunately, I've used oak veneer plywood before, so I already have the settings ready to go and I know what should work nicely. That doesn't stop me from doing a test run anyway though to make sure that the shape is what I'm after. The test cut cut out in under three minutes, so so speedy to get a good idea as to if you're creating the right thing. After creating my tiny test version, I decided that the hanging hole was a little bit too thin at the top, it wouldn't hold too much weight, so I made that bigger. But that was the only change I made to the design between the test cut and the real version. For the actual version, I created two identical shapes because I was going to be creating basically a sandwich for my quality street wrappers to sit in between of like a window, so I needed a front and a back of the same shape. Every piece of wood is slightly different based on all the different variations. However, the settings that worked for me were to cut it on 55 power, 4 speed and 2 passes, which means going over it twice. And those are the settings that work for oak veneer plywood with tape for me. I always tend to use masking tape on top of the wood, it just helps reduce some of the char lines on it. But if you do find yourself with little char lines, you can sand them off and that shouldn't be too much of a problem. This is a little demonstration of the sort of thing that I'm going to create. So Quality Streets have all these beautiful colour cellophane wrappers. In fact, they've changed their design so they're now paper wrappers. However, I have a stash of these plastic ones that are just destined to be used. If you're familiar with Quality Street wrappers and you're a crafter, 
you have potentially looked at them at some point and thought, oh, I think I could make something with those. They're so pretty. They already look like stained glass. What can you make with them? This was a little mock-up of the sort of thing that I'm going to do. I didn't want the colours to be overlapping each other because of the sharp line of where the two colours meet, it wasn't really an organic look that I was going for. You could make various different styles of Suncatcher with this. If you used the yellows, oranges and red, it would be the perfect sun coloured theme. There's those beautiful jewel tones of the green, the purple, the blue, which would create more of a dramatic look. That only left the centre with something to choose, and the only colour that I hadn't used yet was the pink. But I didn't particularly want the pink in the middle. In the end, I chose a layer of pink on top of purple, so it gave a different look to the purple one of the rainbow. And created this really beautiful gem-like appearance. To be honest, I thought ironing the quality street wrappers would make more of a difference to how wrinkly it was. They were still very wrinkly, however the overall wrapper was much flatter, so that was better for my needs. And in fact, the really wrinkly look that it got gave it more of a gem-like appearance, so that was actually really pretty. But the before and after of ironing was not quite the bigger transformation I thought it might be. Because I had all of the colours of the rainbow but indigo, I decided to go for a rainbow, which meant doubling up on each of the colours the first thing I did was use one of my raindrops as a template to cut out the little wrapper. I cut out larger than the shape of the raindrop because of course it needed to attach to the edge of the frame. How pretty is it looking? It's not even attached yet and it's so exciting. I'm really happy with how this is turning out. The crinkliness of the wrappers gives it so much texture and shimmer, it's really lovely. You could either attach this with glue or with double-sided tape. I did double-sided tape just because I didn't want it to get so messy that you could get glue squeezing out of all of those windows. But to attach the two pieces of wood together, once the rainbow was in place I did use glue and clamped it in place until it was secure. In addition I drilled three holes in the bottom of the sunflowers so that I would be able to attach the strings of raindrops. Again, you would be able to create these holes on the laser cutter in the original design, but I didn't know that I was going to be adding these shapes until afterwards. Initially, I thought the raindrop shapes that were getting cut out of the flowers was essentially going to be scrap wood, something that I didn't need, something that I would keep for the future, but not part of this project. However, when all 24 pieces came out, I immediately saw the potential of adding it to be like raindrops cascading down from the sunflower. And now I can't imagine the sun catcher without this aspect. Here I'm just lining them all up, but they've still got their tape on it, which is why you can't see the grain. In fact, because this is the scrap wood from the flower, the grain is going in different directions. What I did was try and line them up 
as similar as possible. So on one string of raindrops, the grain is going diagonally left, on the other string it's going diagonally right, and as many straight down pieces of grain as possible are in the middle. I didn't have the perfect amount for each string, but I made it as organised as possible. If the grain going in different directions is something that is going to bother you, then you would probably want to cut out these raindrops separately. However, that does defeat the purpose of using the scrap pieces of wood. Another option would be to paint them. The last thing you need to do with these raindrops is to drill holes in the top and bottom to attach them. The bottom raindrops only needed a hole in the top. And did I accidentally drill a hole in the top and bottom of all of the raindrops? Yes, I did. But fortunately, I had enough spare, so it wasn't an issue. It was after this that I needed my trip to the craft shop because I didn't have the right thing to attach this to the sun catcher. And if you're anything like me, you don't need much of an excuse to have a trip to the craft shop. So let's go. Despite my crafting stash being pretty decent, unfortunately I didn't have the right thing to connect my sun catcher with my raindrops. So I've come along to Hobbycraft to get some sort of wire or thread, something that will have a bit of weight to it to keep those raindrops hanging nicely. So I've come to Hobbycraft, which if you're not familiar with it, it's a treasure trove for crafters. It can be a bit dangerous if you're not laser focused on what you want, so I'm going to try and be laser focused, but I'll show you around a little bit as well, because if you're anything like me, then you probably enjoy looking at crafting supplies. All right, let's go in and see what they've got. It's about as early as you can get. There were so many pretty things in hobby craft, as you always find in craft shops, but I stayed pretty focused and didn't buy anything that I didn't need, which was a success. One of the first things to catch my eye were these cute little patches that you can iron on. Bees, unicorns, rainbows, what's not to love? All this fun little trim, cactuses, pineapples, watermelons. You can have so much fun playing around and making things with these things. Some discounted Christmas bits and bobs. So many stickers. Lots of fun beads. You can make some really colourful DIY bracelets or necklaces with these. It's always so satisfying to see them organised. So this is the area where I think if you haven't got a laser cutter, you could create a sun catcher yourself. These blank pieces of wood. If you choose one with some windows or cutouts, then you could create this yourself as well. And giant dice. Who doesn't need giant dice for their crafting? And signs. Frames, birdhouses, candlesticks, so much choice. And of course a bug hotel. I don't think the bug hotel needs rainbow windows, however, it might make them happy. And a surprise giant decoupage pig, yeah, of course. I'm not sure I've got the space for it in my house. The dinosaur or the elephant, potentially more so. Love a triceratops. Every colour and pattern of ribbon you could possibly think of. And a lot of fun and colourful yarn. I mean, who doesn't need neon yarn these days? And then finally, a few Easter bits. 
some pretty hanging decorations. Floral wreaths, a bunny wreath, I mean, hello, look at those ears. Really pretty, bright, happy colours. I'm always tempted to just try and make these, but of course the ready-made ones are much simpler. So, always a good choice if you haven't got the time. And then where I actually needed to be, so I got some jump rings. Because there was two pieces of wood for the sun catcher, actually they were too big for the jump rings to go through. Even the large jump rings. So what I did is get some thread and put the thread through the holes of the wood before attaching the chain. I already had some chain at home to go with these jump rings, so it all worked out perfectly. I wasn't quite sure whether a silvery wire or a White wire would look best, so I got both and then I've got the options. The worst thing is when you go home and think, ah, oh, no, I should have got the other one. Okay, success. I've got a couple of different types of wire, a white one and a silver one. We'll see which works out best. And some large jump rings as well if we need them. So all in all, good trip. Right, we are back at home and I've got my wire that I'm going to thread through those holes at the top. This is because the jump rings wouldn't fit by themselves as the two pieces of wood were just too thick. Then to attach the raindrops, I opened up the jump ring and added them to each of the holes on the raindrops. I closed them up as I was working so that they didn't fall off. Of course, this did double up the amount of times I needed to open and close the jump rings, but fortunately, none of them snapped. It's a little bit fiddly, but those needle nose pliers really do do a great job. For the chain, I used this chain because it had some weight to it so it would help the raindrops hang down rather than something like metal wire. If you used that, then if it got a bend in it, that was never gonna go straight again. I used my very exact measuring device of measuring each part of a chain to the length of a raindrop. The only chain that was longer than the length of a raindrop, the very official measuring device, was the top of the middle string of raindrops because I wanted that one to be offset so the middle chain would be longer. The eagle-eyed amongst you may notice one of my raindrops got accidentally attached upside down. I went back and fixed that later. <laughs> Fortunately, not one that caused a problem for any length of time. I took the sun catcher out into the wilderness because I thought it would make the best photos and videos to show you of how lovely it looks in the sunlight. However, the spot I took photos in, it was pretty windy. So there's quite a lot of footage of it spinning around and being quite dramatic. So you might see a few more photos rather than videos of how pretty it looks in the sunshine, but it is so lovely. 
I wouldn't necessarily have this outside unless you protected the quality street wrappers with maybe some extra clear plastic on either side and varnish the wood as well. However, I'm just going to keep this inside, so it's not really an issue. It is not always the case that the vision you have in your head turns out exactly as you want in reality, but this is what I was hoping for and better. Especially with the extra raindrops which weren't in the original plan. Depending on the angle you look at it, the wrappers either looked like stained glass or gem like, really beautiful. All in all, a success. And I'll show you a bit of footage of the sun catcher spinning around like a ballerina having a whale of a dime. So if you're looking for a project to recreate with your own quality street wrappers, this is a great one. And if you're thinking how can you make this a toddler friendly or child friendly craft, you could also do this with a paper plate, cut out the shapes for the windows, and that would be a great activity for a child to make something just as pretty too. Inside the house, it also leaves lovely colours on the wall as well. Three exciting things have come out of today's project. One, a beautiful sun catcher. Two, a quality streets tin full of disappointment for future generations who open it hoping for chocolates, as is the right way of things. And three, a ton of craft supplies so I can make more beautiful projects like this one. If you'd like to see more of those, please consider subscribing. Until next time, thank you so much for watching. Bye.